All right, let's move over and talk about Washington, specifically the Shama Sawant recall. Nice. So in Washington, particularly in Seattle, Shama Sawant, Seattle's only socialist city council member, is facing a recall challenge. In order for a recall to be triggered, enough signatures had to be collected to get it on a ballot. Uh, this week, conservatives led the conservative-led recall against Sawant was certified by King County, meaning that they have approximately 90 days to get a ballot measure approved. Now, we have in Seattle an election in, in all of Washington, an election on November 2nd, 2021, which we'll talk about a little bit in the next story. However, this particular ballot measure to recall Sawant is not going to be appearing on the November 2nd ballot, but will be on its own special election on December 7th. Uh, advocates for the recall have said that this is an unfortunate occurrence, that they just weren't able to get the signatures in on time. But those that support Shama Sawant recognize this for what it truly is, which is a ploy to get fewer voters turned out for this election so that it is easier to recall Sawant. So that is one thing that's very important to recognize at this point. Point. So for this special December 7th election, only voters in District 3 can vote. For those of you that are listening in Seattle, District 3 is Capitol Hill, First Hill, the Central District, uh, Mont Lake, Madison Valley, and Madison Park. Uh, Shama is responsible for backing multiple strikes in our area, pushing for rent control and tenants' rights, backing of Palestinian rights, and in general, fights for the human rights of her constituents. Her opposition is charging her with two primary accusations. First, she has been accused of using her political office to uh, campaign with. And the second is that she violated COVID-19 protocol during the George Floyd protest by letting protesters into the city hall for a rally. Now, that first accusation using her political office to campaign with essentially was that she had printed out a few flyers at the office. Mm. before she went to do to do her campaign thing and the second thing that she did was allow people into the building into the municipal building during the george floyd protest in order to hold a rally not to wreck it nothing there was no property damage it's been there's been a lot of reporting on it there was no property damage covid protocol was followed while they were in the building and they were there at the seat of power to protest the murder of george floyd so dane how important is it for voters of District 3 to mobilize and retain Shama? I mean, I, de I think it's especially given the um, people who live within her district, it's incredibly important to retain her. Um, Can you speak more about that for our listeners that don't know yeah. who's in her district? So her district, which is a big portion of it specifically is Cap Hill and like that... Um, North Seattle kind of area um, is home to the easily one of the most historic and largest um, LGBTQIA plus communities in the U.S. First of all, yep. first and foremost, like it's a cornerstone of our city and um, every major social movement in Seattle has started and come out of Cap Hill. So yep. it's, it's a particular place that absolutely needs that kind of thought and protection of, um, civil rights and human rights, because it is an area that houses so many people that are affected by the constant erasure and removal of human rights and civil rights. So I think that's the number one, my biggest reason why, if I were a um, constituent of her district, I would definitely want to retain her first and foremost. Absolutely. What are the consequences if we don't retain her? Um, I think the consequences, on the other hand, exist more broadly than just her district. I think um, having that socialist voice in um, the conversations about lawmaking in, in our area and in Washington as a whole are super important, even if it's not the primary, like even if it's not the uh, general consensus of the of um, the, the conversation, it is definitely a loud and important voice to have to make people it just continue to push 
further and further left. And this is one thing that I want us to really think about as mm -hmm. you know, as a as a budding community mm -hmm. is the fact that like I'm not the biggest fan of Shama Sawan, like frankly, mm -hmm. but I support her because left unity is so important yeah i've disagreed with her methodologically on how she carried out some of the things that she does personally but that doesn't mean that i don't support mm -hmm. her and that's one of the things that is really really crucial is that we understand that nobody is going to have perfect theory nobody's going to have perfect praxis because we exist and continue to exist in a broken system and if we were to move to a socialist system we would still continue to exist in a system that is going to have inefficiencies. Mm -hmm. might not be as broken as capitalism is, but it's still going to have inefficiencies. There's no perfect implementation of any ism. Yeah, absolutely. There, there, there never will be. And with how center right our government system is in the U.S. Particularly on, in Seattle. Yeah. On every level, that's exactly like on every level of government and particularly in Seattle, it's so important to retain far left uh, speakers and far left thinkers. Absolutely. And there are other council positions, I believe, that are being run for by left and left advocates like Nikita is uh, running. Nikita Oliver is running for District 9, who is another very progressive uh, voice and actually will partner pretty frequently with uh, Shama Sawant and Shama's campaign. Great. Um, so there are others that are campaigning, but retaining Shama is very, very important. Do you think that this uh, do you do you agree with my obviously biased analysis that this is in fact a ploy by the recall Shama campaign in order to you know kick the vote out so it's not on that November second ballot? So my question with, about this is is doesn't um, a doesn't this kind of situation affect both sides pretty evenly or have we seen in the past that um, when not on a uh, full ballot like a measure gets uh predominantly like voted by the right in excess well the so the so it's not about the right or the left it's about the moving party right so mm -hmm. the those folks that have signed the petition to get this on the ballot to create this ballot measure mm -hmm. the special election they're going to be mobilized in order to to vote at the same time Shama hasn't need didn't need to collect those signatures or what have you even so though, she hasn't she doesn't have a mobilized uh, voting e base exactly whereas the recall campaign does if you were to flip this around and say we were to recall uh, let's just say Jenny Durkin right mm -hmm. let's say we were tried to recall Jenny Durkin from a from a far left push and we did that we would have a lot more momentum going into that mm -hmm. even okay. if it was a special election so that's kind of I think what they're banking on. yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I definitely agree with you, but I don't think it changes what has to be done at this point. You know what I mean? Like, whether it was or wasn't, it is now, and there has to be um, a push from the left to educate people and inform people on what is about to happen and what needs to be done. Because oftentimes in this kind of a situation, even leftists are... Like even people or even people on either side who are involved in their local politics, this could sl like slip through the cracks and they might not know about it. Yeah, it is. It is kind of becoming a bigger news piece locally, mm -hmm. definitely, uh, especially now that it's become an official ballot measure. And I expect this to get pretty heated over the the next couple months until december when this when this finally gets settled mm -hmm. but i think what's really difficult for me is not being a voter in district three and watching this happen yeah because i really want to be able to like i want to be able to have my make my voice heard but i can't do that by voting is there a way for any of our local seattle listeners to be able to do that do you think to have their voice heard in this campaign besides just you know voting so, like, for those hmm. that don't live in District 3. Well, I think um, becoming active on the informing aspect of it is uh, probably your best bet. So, forming groups. Um, there's um, local groups on things like Facebook and Twitter where you're, like... Um, Cap Hill area. I'm sure I, I bet you there's even a district three like 
Facebook group probably somewhere out there. There is also you can just, you know, volunteer for the campaign. Yeah. Because you don't need to be a District 3 voter. And that's what I was driving at is you don't need to be a District 3 voter to volunteer for the campaign. Yeah, definitely. There's like you can definitely volunteer for the campaign, but starting conversations with people in the community is another great way to do it. Is what Absolutely. like I knew we were going to talk about the campaign of course, but like it's important to um, understand that just because you're not a District 3 voter, you can still have conversations with your friends and people you know that live in that area. You know, it's important to reach out to people. So, like, for instance, my friend Colleen lives in that area, mm-hmm. lives in District 3. So, I'm definitely going to be chit chatting with her. I'm positive she knows about this already, yeah. but <laughs> she might, she might already be volunteering. Yeah, who knows? Um, I, yeah, so. Uh, I actually have been volunteering with that with oh, the nice. campaign on uh, on and off, and so it's it's there's a lot of energy there, but there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. So anybody that's in the Seattle area or the Puget Sound region, I'd encourage you to consider signing up. To you don't have to go to knock on doors if that's not your cup of tea. You don't have to you know essentially cold call people. You can do sign deliveries. When you're doing sign deliveries, everybody's happy to see you because they've already, you know, spent money or they've already requested the sign. They're already on mm-hmm. board. Like you can have great conversations there as well. And we're all about promoting good conversations. Mm-hmm. 